House repairs yourself. Okay, today we're going to show you how to add a ceiling fan in a bedroom where there is a switch controlling a receptacle on the wall. So one of our receptacles right there is controlled by our switch by the door. So we're going to rearrange that a little bit and we're going to install a ceiling fan and that switch there is going to control the light on the ceiling fan. So what we've done already is set up a little bench here and we've marked the center of the room and I've gone ahead and cut out the drywall and the ceiling already and you can see there's a little bit of insulation up there in the attic and we pushed that kind of aside just a little bit. And I'll show you how we how we did, did that um, in just a minute. Okay, as you can see here, we've got our hole cut here and it's right against the truss up in the attic. Um, I've done that on purpose. Basically what I did is I made some marks on our drywall that were close to the center of the room. Then I favored the hole right toward that truss because it was it was about an inch or inch and a half away so we went ahead and favored um, the truss so we're slightly off center in the room but we're going to get a lot better job we're going to use a fan box like this see this is an electrical box that's made for a fan to mount a fan on you can see it's got this heavier area where the screw goes into it's got more threads and more metal for the threads to grab on this box also has this mounting flange on the side that's why I move my hole over to the truss so that we can go up in the attic drop this down through our hole and just screw it right to that truss and get it nice and strong that's what we want so that's that's how we uh, arrived at our location now there. folks I really want to warn you here if you don't know anything about electricity this is not a job for you to, to attack um, you need to need to start with getting some basic knowledge of electricity make sure the electricity is off at your breaker panel, make sure you found the right circuit. Turn the circuit off, and then come back and test the circuit to make sure that it actually is dead. Um, so what we have here is, this is a switch box that's opened up. I wanted to review with you what we have. We've got, you can see we've got a wire coming in here that feeds to the switch and then back out. Then we've got a red wire that goes up into this this cable, let's see if we can show this to you a little better. This cable here to the right contains that red wire. Okay, I've separated them just a little bit now so you can see better. Um, if, if you know anything about electricity, you know here's these are our neutrals, these white wires. And they're nutted together like they're supposed to be. And we've got a two-way wire here and a three-way wire over here. So this one on the right is a three-way wire, and the one on the left is a two-way wire. Now the two-wire coming in is our hot source. You can see we've got the hot wire running to the switch. I'll back up a little bit here, I'm sorry. Hot wire running to the switch, which gives the switch power. Then when the switch is on, it makes a connection point here, and it sends the electricity out to this red conductor on that three-way cable. Um, now we also see that on the three-way cable, we've got a black wire which kind of looks white there because of some extra excess paint, but that's really a black conductor. We've got a black wire that goes into that three-way cable as well. That is a hot wire that comes off of this other hot wire. We can see these are all continuous, and somebody has, has nutted this together in the past, which is just an easy way to make this, this loop complete here. Sometimes you'll see these nutted back here, get my hand out of the way for you, these nutted back here, and then a single wire coming off of that wire nut onto that terminal. In this case, they just made it easy on themselves and looped it through there and then nutted it to that one. So what we've got is a hot wire coming in, this black wire goes through here, connects to the terminal on the switch, goes back out, and it sends power on down the line through this three-way cable. Then we've got, when the switch is on, power going into this red conductor that goes the same place as this three-way cable does. So my guess is this three-way cable goes over to our wall outlet over here, which will probably, which is split. The top is controlled with a switch. The bottom is always hot. 
That's why they have the black and the red conductor heading over to that receptacle because they need both over there. They need the switched source and they need the, the constant powered source. So they've got them both. Okay, so what that tells us is that we need to abandon this red conductor, just cut it off and take it out of the switch. We need to feed a new wire into this box from the attic that will control the fan and the light. Now we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to use a three wire when we feed it into our box because we want both up by our ceiling fan as well. We want a continuous hot wire to control the ceiling fan, which will be on a pull chain. And we want a red wire, which will be on the switch, just like they had here, which will control the light up there. So that way, whether the switch for the light is on or off, the ceiling fan pull chain will work just fine. Okay, well, let's see if we can uh, get up in the attic and get this process Okay, rolling. we're up in the attic now. Lots of insulation um, that we pushed aside here right by the hole where we're going to put our box. Just remember when you come up in an attic like this, be careful where you're walking so you don't step right through the ceiling and always wear a mask to uh, filter out the, the fiberglass or any kind of other airborne particulate matter that will get in your lungs. You don't want that to happen. So use your safety cautions. This video is not intended to give you all the safety cautions needed when working in an attic, but uh, do your diligence to know what's needed when you get up in an attic to do the work. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to install our electrical box from the top. And um, I've taken the time to put a mark on here. That's three-eighths of an inch up from the bottom of the electrical box. We've got half-inch drywall. The reason I made it three-eighths is because I'd rather have that box just sticking up a little bit than to be hanging down below the surface of the drywall. That's going to make our fan hang down when we trim it out, and that's not going to look good. So three-eighths is a safer number. It gives us a little eighth-inch to play with there. Now, um, since I don't have any of my boys here today to help video, I'm going to have to put this in off camera. But uh, basically, the box comes with some screws that attach through those mounting holes, and they just go right into the truss. So it's, it's pretty simple. While the boys are at home working on their school, we're going to get this on video and show you how it's done. Okay, I've got the box mounted uh, with all the screws, and I've also gone ahead and punched out the hole in the top of the box. The manufacturer of this box provides a strain relief clamp that goes in from the bottom, which is kind of nice in this case. So we'll stick it in from the bottom and shove our wire up through that way. And uh, we'll come back up here and make all our connections, uh, or not connections, but, but, but run our wire and send it back down the wall to our switch in just a little bit. All right. Hey, okay, we're back, back down. down here by the switch now. We're going to try to locate what we have. Now I've just taken this little drywall saw and I've poked in here and I see there's a stud right there. Now this side here has no stud, okay? It's free. So we know that the box is mounted on a stud on this side. So if we even look up here, we have another clue. Look at that, there's a return air there and that stud is the same stud, <coughs> excuse me, as this one. So now we know we have a stud cavity right here that we're going to be working with. So we have to find that in the attic. Now another thing we know is that, <coughs> excuse me, that there's a wall that runs across here and should show in the attic. So that will help us. Now I have measured from the corner of this wall over to this box and to this side here is about 14 inches. Now we don't have to get too worried about exactly where we drill that hole. We could we could get, this is about 15 and a half right to there, or maybe 16. We could try to drill it right on that, but if we're off just a little bit, we'll end up in this other stud cavity or right on top of the stud, even worse. So let's not try to hit that exactly right there. Let's try to hit it over here somewhere. So this is 14, so we'll maybe come 13 inches off of there. We'll, we'll end up dropping our wire down uh, somewhere in this area. So we're going to try to find that in the attic now. Okay, we're up here in the attic now, and I've uncovered the top of this wall. You can see this is a, a, a nail plate that they put on top of the wall that the drywall is screwed to from the bottom on both sides. It's 2x6, which is wider than the 2x4 wall. This plate right here doesn't have one. That's just drywall is just floating there. You can see what it looks like. You can see the top of the 2x4 on the wall. That's that 
small section of wall over our doorway and that's where the ceiling starts in our room now we know that about 16 inches over we had the box or the stud that the box was mounted to and we can see right here that there's our two wire going down and there's our three wire coming up that we saw coming out of the top of the box so i think with confidence we can now drill a hole just right in here somewhere to start fishing our new wire out of the box now i'm i'm drilling a one inch hole in here just because it'll make it a little bit easier to find the hole with our fish tape if you drill a half inch hole which is really all you need for a wire it's going to be really hard to get the fish tape up there to to find the hole um, you could even drill something even bigger, but this is frankly all I had with me right now. Sometimes I've drilled even an inch and a half hole. Um, but this this will help us a little bit. Okay. We're through. Okay, drilled a small hole in the box so we can get another wire out of there. Now just be careful not to get too wild on that because you do have wires on the back side of that. So just be careful when you do that. Now ideally we would go up here and cut a hole in the drywall and just push it, push the wire right through that hole in the plate that we, drew from the, that we drilled from the attic. Um, we're going to try to do it without that though. We're, we've got our fish tape out here and what I've done is I've calculated the amount of distance that I need. So right there, if you can hear that or not, it's hitting the top plate. So what I'm going to do off camera here, since I'm by myself, is I'm going to try to wiggle this around a little bit, turning it this way, turning it that way, try to get it to where I can find that hole up in the attic. I may have just found it. We'll go up and see. Nope, nothing there. So we must have just uh, bent the uh, the fish tape a little bit and it kind of gave way and, and turned a corner. Um, so we'll pull it back down and just try to jab it up and down for a little bit till we think we can find that hole. If we have a lot of trouble finding it, we might try to come from the top and see if we can get the fish tape to hit that hole in that electrical box too. So there's also a couple of other techniques and that is a stiff rod. There's a, a stiff rod you can buy that's made for fishing that might, it's a little easier to direct. You might be able to get that to go through the hole. Um, you can also use a, an old piece of wire. If you have that, a stiff single strand of wire uh, will work pretty well sometimes if you don't have a fish tape. But just going to be a little bit of playing around here until we, until we get it through the hole. Okay, after several attempts of trying to stab up there with the fish tape, I wasn't able to find the hole very well on the top plate, so... I went ahead and reversed my process, went up in the attic and I pushed the fish tape down on top of the box and then I, I enlarged the hole there on the top of the box. You can see I just took my drywall saw and I just sliced out about, oh, I don't know, an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch out of the drywall there. That'll get covered with the cover plate. And I used this little scrap of white wire right here and I, I just wrapped it in there and I hooked it. I hooked the end of the fish tape and I guided it into this hole and I've grabbed it with my needle nose. I don't know if you can see that real well there on the camera, um, but I've got the end of the, the fish tape right there. So I'm just going to pull my wire out and I'm going to pull that fish tape down. Then I can tape my, my three wire onto there um, and pull it up into the attic, run it down into our new ceiling box and we'll be ready to wire it up. Now one more thing uh, about wire selection, you need to match the gauge of wire that this circuit is using. Um, this particular circuit is a 15 amp circuit right now which uses 14 gauge copper wire. That's what we have here now. Um, now if you're using aluminum wire, it may be 12 gauge on a 15 amp circuit, um, a little thicker. Wires can vary, wire materials can vary on the thickness. Um, on what relates to what amperage of breaker. Uh, but in this case, we've got copper wire. It's a 12 gauge, I'm sorry, a 14 gauge wire on a 15 amp circuit, which is the way it should be. 
So we are going to add a 14 gauge wire just like this circuit is using now. Okay, we pulled the fish tape through and I've taped on my 14.3 copper cable. It's a Romex cable, an NM type, non-metallic. It's for indoor use. Again, I just want to remind you, this is not this video is not intended to give you all the necessary information you need to, to start doing wiring projects. So if you're not familiar with wiring, go find out, go learn um, some basic details before you do that, before you do this project. Um, but if you already know some basic wiring uh, information and techniques, then, then go ahead and give it a try. Just be careful and make sure your power is off. Okay, so we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to tape this real well. If, if you're like me, you want to do this the first time right because we don't want to have to try to pull that fish tape back through there again. So I've taped it starting at the bottom. I've gone all the way up. And you can see I've gone past the transition point of the wire onto the fish tape. And um, that gives it kind of a, a shape that will help lead through the hole in the box and anything else that it comes in contact with as it runs up the wall. Uh, then I brought the tape all the way back down and I tore it off down here. So it's got a double layer on it. You want to make good and sure that that stays on there. Now I'm starting by pushing it up through the hole because that's the hardest spot to get through. I don't want to get up to the attic and find out that I've pulled it three inches and I'm stuck already. So, so I'm getting it through there and I'm going to go up to the attic and do the rest. Okay, here's our, <clears throat> excuse me, here's our fish tape. I'm going to pull that up. There's our wire. Now we're going to pull enough slack through in this case to run all the way over to the ceiling box for the fan. So you determine how much slack you think you need, but I'm going to pull about what I think I need. And we're going to stop about there. All right. We're going to take it over to the ceiling box next. Now let me give you some basic info on wiring, <clears throat> or stapling, I'm sorry, stapling the wire. Um... The code at this point when this video is being made tells us that we need to staple the wire every four and a half feet or 54 inches. So we're going we're gonna to make our way over to our box over there, which is real hard to see with all this insulation. But we're going to run across the trusses, push a little insulation out of the way. And we're just going to staple it about every four feet till we get over there. Then the code also says that we need to get a staple within eight inches of the box as well so we'll put another staple all the way at the end down there <clears throat> next to the box now you might be wondering what about this wire that's in the wall how are we going to staple that the code also makes provision for that so when you're fishing a wire in the wall it simply says you don't need any staples so that makes it convenient for what we're doing okay here we are over at the ceiling box again earlier in the video i indicated that we were going to put the strain relief in from the bottom and shove the wire up from the bottom but uh that certainly isn't the best way to do it. Um, the manufacturer, just because I've changed the plan on this, that really, it's it's not really that that's a bad way to do it, but we just changed the plan the way we're working here. The manufacturer provides this little strain relief clip with the box. Whoops, got to find that. Um, and we're going to go ahead and use that. You've probably all seen the type with two screws on it that are that's metal, and that works fine too. But this one comes with the box and. We're just going to use it. But if I put it in from the top, I can shove this wire straight down through the hole. And we want to get a little bit of the sheathing through there so that the strain relief operates on the sheathing itself, not on the actual wire. Pull that paper out of the way. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach a staple here within 8 inches of the box. Then I'm going to staple it every 4 feet or so all the way back to our point where we came up out of the wall from the switch. We'll get the rest from down below. Okay, now we've got uh, the wiring down through the wall into our box. Uh, let's talk about a little bit of safety here now. Remember, turn off the breaker. Can't say that enough. Um, guys, if you don't, if, especially if you aren't experienced with electricity, make sure that power is off. Um, remember, too, that we're judging the gauge or the thickness of wire that we're using based on the rating of the breaker not necessarily the wire that's being used on the circuit. Somebody could have changed the breaker out in the panel and caused a little bit of a mismatch. You just want to remember this as a general rule of thumb. And again, guys, this isn't really an education video on electricity, but just a few friendly reminders, so to speak. Um, remember this rule of thumb. A 15 amp breaker uses 14 gauge copper wire. A 20 amp breaker 
needs to have 12 gauge copper wire, a little bit thicker. The lower the number, the thicker the wire. The higher the amperage rating on the breaker, the thicker you want the wire so that when the load or the short happens somewhere in the circuit, I should say if the short happens somewhere in the circuit, um, the breaker will trip before the wire burns in half. So if you follow that rule of thumb and that guideline um, for basic residential wiring, you're going to be safe and you're going to be well covered and your breakers are going to do the job they're supposed to do. Okay, as I mentioned before, we're going to remove this red wire. And remember, this goes to half of our outlet on the wall, our receptacle, I should say, on the wall that is powered by this switch. So half of the receptacle is off right now. Well, it's all off because the breaker's off right now. But if the breaker were on, this switch would now do nothing. Remember, that receptacle is being fed by this power wire, but half of it, they split the receptacle, and there's a whole other video on that. We're not going to talk about or show you how to do that. But half of that receptacle is powered by this end. So if we want to power that up when we're done, we need to make sure that this has power to it. For right now, we want to get it out of the switch, though. Okay, another thing I want you to look at here is the ground wire. Um, we need to group our ground wire with this group of ground wires. Now, this house was built, or wired at least, at a time when a ground a wrap or twist of wires did not require a wire nut. Um, they have since found that that it's a good idea to get a wire nut on those because they can work loose. You can see here, this one's even starting to work loose. So what we're going to do is remove that and straighten this out. We're going to wrap our ground wire around this twist and we're going to use one of these ground... Whoops, it's kind of out of focus there. I apologize. There we go. One of these special wire nuts made for a ground wire grouping. What it does is it slides through this hole and onto this twist of ground wires and it just tightens around it. We're not going to put it on just yet because we need to add our ground wire into that twist of wires. Alright, I'm going to uh, do that. I am also going to add the neutral in with this group of neutral wires. So that'll, that'll get added right to that group. We know where the ground wire is going. The black wire, we want to be represent continuous power. So we want it up to our new box with continuous power. So the fan, no matter where the switch is at, off or on, will have power to it. So we're going to put it down here with this power wire. Our red wire is going to run to the light. So we're going to put that back on the switch the way the other one was before so that when the switch is on, the light will be on. When the switch is off, the light will be off. This wire here, we're going to wrap right back up with this power wire so that it feeds and powers up the other half of that outlet. So I'm going to work on wiring that. I'll show you when I'm done what it looks like. We'll put it all back in the box and we'll, we'll take you up and show you the ceiling. Okay, I've got that all closed up, put back. All we need is a cover plate on there. Now let's go check out this end up here. We've got our wiring sticking down through the box, just how we, how we sent it through. There's our restraint clip. Now, at the point of time when this video is being made, all fan boxes need to be metal to be code approved. You know, at some point along the line, they may come out with a plastic box that's strong enough and meets code approval, but uh, at this point, we, we use metal boxes. Anytime you use a metal box, you have to ground the box itself and the fixture, both. So what we're going to do is use this ground screw. We're going to wrap our ground wire around there. And I'm going to try to show you how to do this. Take my needle nose pliers and just kind of, whoops, sorry about that, kind of crimp that around there. Now we're, we're wrapping the wire in the direction that the screw tightens. And just, again, not a full education class on electricity, but some tips for you. So as you tighten the screw, oh, if I could get it with one hand. Well, I need my cameraman today, I'll tell you that. But as you tighten the screw, it doesn't unwrap the wire, but it wraps it more tightly 
around the screw. That makes for a strong connection to the wire. Now, what we have by wrapping that and leaving this tails, we've got a place that we can use to ground our fixture when we install the fan. Now we're going to install the fan on another video. Um, this video is just how to, how to do the wiring for it. Um, so I'm going to leave you soon here, but just want to remind you what the way we set this up. Here's your neutral wire. The black wire is our hot wire, which we want to attach to the fan itself so that we can use the chain to pull the chain for high, medium, low, and off. Whether the light is on or not, we'll have power to the fan so we can use the chain. Then the red wire, which is attached to the switch, goes to the light. So again, whether the fan is on or off, we can have power to the light. When we come in the room, we can flip that switch and expect to have light. Okay, that'll do it for this time with HouseRepairsYourself.com. I hope this really helps you to figure out a way to wire that ceiling fan in, in your bedroom that you've been maybe fighting for a long time that doesn't have a ceiling fixture right now. So go out there and get it done and work on bringing your family home. Don't forget to push the like button to subscribe to our channel.